What's happening guys? Thanks for coming by my page and checking out Seth Rocks. Today you're going to be watching my video on how to build a fairy garden house. Uh, it was a first time project for me so it was a learning process and hopefully you will be learning as well. You will need your rocks, your sea glass, you're going to need preserved moss, you're going to need type S mortar which is a premix. so all you got to do is add water. I used a uh, toothpick for jointing. You're going to want a margin trowel and also a sealant at the end. A sealant not just for being outside but also it is a color enhancer and it'll bring out the colors in the rocks a little bit better than its natural state. So guys with no further ado please leave comments if you have any or if you have any questions on what I'm doing. Leave questions and I'll answer them and if you have any suggestions um, because this is new to me I'm open to suggestions and, I, and my way may not necessarily be the best way but I will show you the way I do it. Guys, enjoy the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys, here we go. Um, we are now started the base. Unfortunately, I started the video a little bit after I started the base, but so what you see there is about a quarter to a half inch of mortar, and I spread it out nice and flat. I made it a little larger than the size of the building that I wanted to build just for stability of making that base originally. So they, see, you see there that I connected the, the structure finally all the way around. And later on, once that sets up, I will peel away the rest of that excess mortar on the outside so you won't actually see it. Now there I'm putting down a stone over the top of the door so to carry over the rest of the stone to go above it. So that is called a carrying stone. Um, you know, when I'm picking all these stones out, you want to make sure you've got a nice face and you use the best face you possibly can. And it's going to really bring out the the character of this building if you pick really cool rocks so that's what I do a lot of times I'm picking my time picking out what rock I want to use and obviously you need to make sure that they fit pretty well you're gonna see there that I'm using a toothpick what I'm doing is going around and making sure all the joints are tucked so what I mean by tucked is that they're just filled they're filled with mortar so there's no voids and then once they set up correctly uh, once the mortar is set up to the right consistency I guess is what I'm looking for I scrape it away and shape the joint to how I want it and what that toothpick does being that it's wood it leaves a really cool texture with the mortar and it's also small enough for me to get into those tiny joints otherwise if you use that other pointing tool that you see that I have there that's sitting in the bucket it's just too big and it will smear the mortar all over your nice stones and that's not what we're looking to do we want to keep the faces of those stones pretty nice and clean so people can check them out and enjoy them so I use that toothpick and it helps a lot to make sure that everything stays clean so here I noticed that I I knocked off a rock and it just wasn't quite strong enough um, I did try wiggling it around just to make sure it was strong and it popped off. So I reset it and then I realized that I need to put some backing to these. I originally wanted to leave them open so you could look in the door and see the stones from the inside, but I also realized I'm going to be putting a door on this thing. So you're not going to see inside anyways, and I need the mortar for stability. So right here you see me building up that front corner. I'm also going to be putting a window here. So I'm trying to think about how I'm going to build that window and what carrying rock I'm going to use to go across to create the hole. So once I figured out what stones I want, I tuck it up, make sure there's nice support behind it, and really make sure there's secure. So I finally eventually see I come up with a rock that I like. I use that flat one as my carrying stone, and it creates a nice uh, spot for me to lay on top of afterwards also. So in a minute, you're going to see here that I try to put the sea glass in. So now I, I gotta, I'm bringing up that side to height so I can make it all fit. So then I look for the sea glass, and uh, I'm going to try to use hot glue. It didn't quite work out, and I'll explain that as we see it. Um, I ended up having to do something different. So here I'm just getting the corners up. Um, when you do your corners, you want to try to crisscross them, kind of like one coming from one side of the building and then the next one going from the other side of the building. You want to cross those corners. For one, it helps with stability of the structure, and two, it just looks better than a bunch of rocks stacked up. So that's the way we want to do that. Now here, um, I finally got that window up, and I'm trying to put in the glass. I'm about to put take out all my sea glass and check out what pieces I want to use. So there, 
I'm taking them all out, figuring out which ones I want. Um, so I take out a variety. And remember, when you're doing this, you want a, a lot of stone to pick through. Um, you don't want to be short on stone. You want more than enough. So make sure you have a lot so you have different ones to choose from. Same thing with if you're using sea glass. You want to have a lot so you have different options. So I'm using the hot glue gun here to try to get that sea glass in, and it's just not working for me. The, the glue gun just sets up way too fast for me and I couldn't work with it. I'm working with really small pieces. So for me to try to get it in there fast enough before that glue was setting up just wasn't working and I couldn't put any pressure behind it because it would fall through to the other side. So what I end up doing is realizing that this just doesn't work. So what I did was put a bunch of mortar behind on the inside of that uh, structure behind the window and then let it set up. And then what I do later on is put the glass to that mortar so I can actually have something to push up against and it won't fall through and I also end up going to Gorilla Glue it worked a lot better it doesn't set up as fast as the hot glue gun which was uh, what I needed the hot glue gun just didn't seem to stick very well and not only that it just set up too fast for me to be using um, another thing I'll suggest for using this stuff like these little pieces of glass that I use um, also making the door it helped me make the door is um, what you might call it it's just a tweezers tweezers really help when because my hair I've got fat fingers uh, so sometimes it's hard to grab these little things so see right there you're gonna see me um, scraping out the window so I have like a little bit of a hollow so I can put the glass into it I don't want the glass protruding past the wall so I scraped it out and once it's completely set up um, I think it's like another day or so that I later on that I put the glass in so not when it's all set so you see me building up the back corner here um, and obviously on the front of the house you want to use like the coolest stones because that's the front um, but I try to make sure I use cool stones everywhere this whole time I'm also trying to plan out how I'm gonna put a roof on I originally wanted to use a roof um, a, st a big stone for a roof kind of like the Flintstones but uh, when I did kind of test out a stone for that, it just seemed to be too heavy. So I ended up deciding to go with wood uh, that you'll see in just a few minutes that I start using. And I'll explain that as we go. Again, guys, this is a completely new experience for me. So any questions you have or suggestions that may help me, that would be great. And I'll help you out with whatever I can tell you. Um, the thing about mortar is, I don't know if I went through and mixed it yet, but you'll see me mix up some mortar here. The Type S mortar, or any type of mortar that you are going to be using, but I suggest using the Type S. It's a great mortar. Um, you want to make sure that the consistency of it is of peanut butter. Actually, a little bit thicker than peanut butter. What that's going to do is going to allow you to mold it, but it's also not going to be too runny, where when you put the mortar on the stone, it's going to run down on your stone below. That's not what you want. So make sure that's, that mortar is thick like peanut butter okay or even a little thicker if you have to um, and when you're mixing your mortar another suggestion is just do little bits of water at a time and <clears throat> because when you do that you can uh, see what consistency you're at and fix it that way if you need to add a little more to you, more water you can but the thing is you can't take water out I mean if you have extra mortar you can always add mortar to it but you don't need a lot so there you go you see me mixing it and then I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes when I let the mortar sit that's called slaking and what it's doing is kind of setting up it's activating um, the mortar so then once it sets up a little bit you only needed to let it slake for about five minutes and then you just stir it up again you probably don't need water with it you just need to stir it and it'll be fine um, and that's called slaking that's the process of the mortar setting up um, and activating the mortar for you uh, here we go. I'm just building up the sides. I'm trying to get everything to height. I finally decided that I wanted to have a slant to the roof and have the back lower than the top. So it's going to slant downward that way. Uh, I've still just been debating about what I want to use as a roof. I do decide to go through with the wood, but at this point in the video, I truly didn't really know exactly what I was going to do. Um, here you guys see me building this back and I make sure that that back is full of cement on the back side of it so it's nice and solid and it's got a good structure there it is so we got the full structure um, again here I am taking the wood 
and measuring it out to the the size I need. I take it outside and cut it to what I want, and then uh, I'll come back in and, and start working on that. Um, right there, you see me using the glue, the Gorilla Glue, to put in the glass. And now that that mortar in the back is set up quite well, I can push that glass right into it and not worry about pushing it off. Um, so again, this whole time, I'm like trying to figure out how I'm going to make this roof stick, right? So if I use mortar with the rock, it's going to stick really well. Because I'm using the wood, mortar does not connect to it very well. So what you want to do, um, what I figured out is that I look for all the void, uh, sorry, all the contact points of the roof to the rocks. I put the Gorilla Glue onto the rocks, put the roof down, let it set up for like a day. And then the next day I'll go through, you're going to see I um, fill in all the voids between the roof and the rocks with mortar. Um, here you're going to see that I'm putting on the glass just to cover up the front piece of that. So it's not just a straight piece of wood that's, you know, factory cut. Um, and I really thought that the glass was a great way to hide it. With the glue and the glass, though, I did use the Gorilla Glue just because it doesn't set up fast, which is a good thing. You just got to hold it down a little bit. So make sure you did. You saw those rock, uh, those glass pieces slide off. It's because I didn't hold it down too much. There's the wifey checking it out. Note to self. Don't use the dining room table. <laughs> if you have a good workspace, use it. Um, so here I'm using the preserved moss that I got from Michael's as well. And you can see that it's rolled up already. So it naturally just wants to roll. So when you go to glue it down, which I'm going to do in a second, you've got to hold that down and make sure that it stays down. So just hold it for a few minutes and take your time. Um, and then I kind of make sure it's in place. I, I want it just over the that glass a little bit to kind of cover it up a little, but not completely another thing that i found out um that wood has really cool sides to it which still have the bark on it which i liked i thought that was a great feature um so i didn't want to cover that up and i end up so here i am gonna i'm gonna sorry i was looking to do uh fill in that back there but i decided not to so here i cut off the side so i can expose that bark really well but then when you cut that moss it leaves like a little factory edge because it's put on the moss is on like this little mesh so what i did was take those pieces of cut uh strips that i had and pulled off some of the moss and just glued it on around the edging so it covers up that factory edge that i just cut off so it looks completely like it just grew on that piece of wood you know what i mean um, also you'll see at some point at the top of that roof there's a little bit of like the moss just doesn't cover that mesh completely all perfectly, so I take off pieces of moss from the excess cuts uh, strips that I cut off, and then just glue it to the roof to try to hide any mesh parts as po as much as possible. Here you see me going through and tucking that mortar um, in with the wood, and making sure that the roof is sealed to the building. What I did do, uh, have to do later on, I didn't videotape it, but what happens is that mortar shrinks once it hits that wood, so it leaves a little bit of a, a line across that needs to get filled back in later on. So the next day you might have to go through and fill in with a little more mortar. I didn't videotape that part because there was no real need to it. I just figured I'd let you guys know. So keep an eye out for that. Again, the big thing, guys, is just keeping these rocks clean. So, um, you know, those are the big features of everything, and people are going to want to see the rocks and look at each and every one of them. Um, so make sure you keep it nice and clean. And that's where you see me putting on different parts of the moss to cover up. I also glued the back down, which actually proved to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. I had to hold it down a little more, and I ended up gluing it a couple times because it just kept wanting to pull away from the, the wood. Um, so that's it. Um, pretty soon you're going to see me... Oh, the door. So there's the fairy door. I did use... Uh, a little seashell for the handle. I don't know if I mentioned that. I just grabbed a couple of pieces of wood from outside and uh, cut them to length. And then this is where I use the um, what do you call them? Tweezers to help with that because that was kind of hard to hold on to. So here I'm sealing it, guys. What you want to do with the make sure I mainly use this sealant to bring out. It's also a color enhancer to bring out the color of the stone. It's kind of like uh, suntan lotion. You want to make sure it's r rubbed in really well uh, and not to leave streaks. 
So if you're leaving streaks on there, it's going to show up later on and have a white streak on your stone. So you got to make sure that you wipe it all off. You want to let it sit for f about five minutes. You're going to do two coats. And I found that instead of just wiping it, um, also using one of the brushes to make sure it's evenly spread out between everything. And then you use the rag there to wipe it off and help use any of the brush pieces to kind of brush out any streaks you may have. And that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, check it out. Uh, at the end, you're going to see the full wrap around of the whole house. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And uh, any suggestions as well. This is all new to me. And uh, hopefully I can answer any questions you've got. Thanks, guys. Subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you in the next video.